Hello, I'm Shripan from Chelios Academy of Sciences. Today, I'm going to introduce our research work, Cooper, testing the binding code of scripting languages with corp mutation. It's a joint work with researchers from Qianxin and Penn State University. As we all know, scripting languages is widely useful and powerful. It's easy to learn and develop. Nowadays, scripting languages are integrated into document processing programs. For example, JavaScript is integrated into PDF and HTML. Webair code is integrated into Office document. In these programs, embedded scripts code are usually used to manipulate the content elements of a document. Vulnerabilities in these embedded scripting languages are very dangerous. Attacks can exploit vulnerabilities in these programs to execute a busy code and take control of the system. And every year, many vulnerabilities are discovered in embedded scripting system. So it's essential for us to design an effective method to find bugs in embedded script code. First of all, let's look into the interlace of document processing programs. The input contains two parts. Native objects represent figures, text, and even annotations. Script, script code contains scripting languages, like JavaScript code here. The program also has two components to process inputs. They have native code to handle native objects and use language interpreter to execute script, script, script code. To connect the two different components, this, this program usually have a binding layer to do translation. However, the binding layer is too complicated to be 100% correct and bugs are inevitable. Previous work like five cardo only focuses on mutating the script code, which may miss complicated bugs. We take a vulnerability discovered by Cooper to demonstrate our concept. It's a heap overflow in Adobe or Cobalt. Attackers can use this vulnerability to run a basic code remotely. It's so severe that we were awarded with $2,500 bounty for this particular vulnerability, and it had been patched by Adobe before our paper submission. Then let's see how to trigger this vulnerability. First of all, in native objects, we must insert, a, insert one actual element into Finder's white source one. Then in script code, we must utilize JavaScript code to change the zoom type of the document to ZFW. So as you can see, to trigger this vulnerability, we must, we must mutate both native objects and the script code. And the traditional one-dimension mutation father cannot find this sort of vulnerability. In spite of this vulnerability, we want to design an effective method to discover this sort of vulnerability related to both native objects and the script code. Our solution is cooperative mutation. It's rather straightforward. We mutate both native objects and script code in cooperative manner. So we come to a problem, how to achieve cooperative mutation. First of all, we need to infer the relationship between native objects and script code. And then we use the infer the relationship to get a mutation in both sets. Specifically, if a script API has a potential connection with some objects in a document, we will assign these objects a high priority for mutation. Otherwise, we just randomly choose some objects for mutation. All of our methods is straightforward. There are also several challenges to be solved. The first challenge is how to infer the relationship between native objects and script code. Once we have the relationship, we need to solve the second challenge. How to use the infer the relationship to get a mutation. However, when we solve these two challenges, we encounter a new problem that there are so many native objects. That means we will have a heavy search space for inferring relationship and getting mutation. It's not doable. To solve this problem, we need to reduce the search space. So how to reduce the search space? We want to, we plan to categorize all native objects into different classes according to their semantic feature. So let's come to our challenge zero how to class the native objects into semantic similar classes. Then let's figure parental overview of our solution. 
it has three components. The first component is object clustering. It clusters a large number of native objects into a small number of object classes according to their semantic features. Once we have the object classes, we will need to infer the relationship between object classes and scripting APIs. This is the purpose of our, sec of our second component, the relationship inference. This component utilizes the statistic method to infer the relationship. Finally, we come to the third component, the relationship guided mutation. In this component, we use the inferred relationship to guide mutation. Then I will show what components in detail. The first part of our solution is object clustering. An object usually consists of some attributes. Each attribute is a pair of name and object. Through our observation, the name of object usually carries some semantic information. So in the first step, we class the native objects with their names. It's very simple. We just put objects with different native names into different categories. However, in some color cases, clustering objects by their names may not be correct. To get a fine grained object classes, we split and merge object classes with attribute similarity. Specifically, we use that formula to calculate the similarity between object classes. If the similarity is less than the threshold value, we split the big classes into small ones. If the similarity is greater than the threshold value, we merge these small classes into a bigger one. Through these two steps, we finally get a set of fine-grained object classes. The second part of our solution is relationship reinference. We take two steps to infer the relationship. In the first step, we do execution logging for what samples and divide them into two sets, success set and failure set. Specifically, we prepare a testing code and insert the testing code into the orange sample. Then we use the application to open a new sample. If the testing code successfully found the related elements, we put the orange sample into the success set. Otherwise, if the testing code cannot find the related elements or produce error, we put the orange sample into failure set. So through this first step, we have divided all samples into success set and failure set. After we divided all samples into success set and failure set, we use the statistical method to infer the relationship between object classes and scripting API. And finally, we get a relation map. As you can see from the map, the success rate is the percentage of samples that contain this class of objects in the success set. The failure rate is the same percentage in failure set. And the difference is the difference between success rate and failure rate. We think the different value represents the strength of the relationship between object class and the scripting API. In the second part of our, of our solution, we have got a relationship between object classes and scripting API. In this part, we will utilize the relation map to get a mutation. First of all, we determine a target API group. Then we take a traditional method to generate a script code. For native objects, we get a set sample and select objects in this sample for mutation. Specifically, we refer to the relation map and the design algorithm to calculate, to calculate the mutation probability for each ob object in the set sample. In general, the mutation probability is positively correlated with the strength of the relationship. Then we select objects with mutation probability and mutated selected objects in three mutation strategies. Finally, we synthesize the mutated sample and the script code together and produce a final input. So that's all of our solution. For implementation, we developed the Cooper in four hundred three hundred lines of Python code. And Cooper has utilized some open source library. In particular, it used PyPDF2 Python library to pass PDF format, and use zip file and XML Python library to pass word format. For scripts generation, we utilize Dometo and improve it with block level template. Cooper currently supports two formats, 
PDF on the world. It's notable that Cooper is extensible and portable. We can easily add some new features to Cooper and can also be apply Cooper to some new document formats with limited memory efforts. Then I'm going to talk about Cooper's evaluation. We apply Cooper to their world programs to find bugs, and we compare the capabilities of bug finding and edge finding in different configurations and tools. We apply Cooper to three their world programs, Adobe Acrobat, Foxit Reader, and Microsoft Word. In four months, we totally found 134 progress on low bugs, got 33 CVE numbers, and 59 bugs have been fixed. We were totally awarded with $22,000 bounty. All these vulnerabilities are related to 90 API in 11 objects. We applied different configurations on Adobe Acrobat and recorded the bug funding history in one week. As we can see from this figure, Cooper 4 found 18 bugs in one week, which is the most among all configurations. This is our proof of our concept that cooperative mutation is essential to find a bug in binding code. We also do the experiments on focused reader. The result is similar to Adobe Acrobat. Cooper 4 always found the most the bug. To test the IG funding ability, we will apply all configurations to Adobe Acrobat and record the layer IG funding history in one week. We record both script coverage and native coverage. As we can see from these two figures, Cooper 4 always found the most coverage in both types. We also do the edge funding experiments on Fox Reader and Microsoft Word. Their results is very similar to Adobe Acrobat. Cooper 4 always found the most coverage. These results can also be a proof of our concept. In conclusion, we propose cooperative mutation to test the binding code of scripting languages. Our system, Cooper, found, eight, found 134 bugs in Adobe Acrobat, Fox Reader, and Microsoft Word. And we received 33 CV numbers and $22,000 bounty. And Cooper is now open source at this, at this website. Thanks for listening. I'm ready for questions.